מסכת בו מציע דף מ"ב בייז, עמוד בייז, I can't get the names right because the, because my uh, application here doesn't work, your mother again, הייני רי שבאס אלכון הנצחוק, יצחוק אלכון, הייני רי שבאס יצחוק, אלכון הנצחוק, not the covener of, and לילו נשמאס אלכון, דוי בן אלכון, Thank you very much for your heartfelt tefillot for my brother, Moshe Arya Ben Nechoma, my aunt, Aviva Bas Dvora, and Besoch Shachol Yisrael. I speak English and art schoolies. I speak English, also I speak art schoolies. Heartfelt tefillot is an art schoolies word. Okay, along, along with the Torah giants, the Torah luminaries. Okay, now I'm just trying to cover up for my mistakes here. I made a big mistake in the end of last year. Uh, I said something completely wrong because I was not well prepared. No, 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 I'm doing this online. 10 million people can watch me now uh, admitting my mistakes. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, so therefore, um, there were three cases in the in the Gemara in Ben Beis, Domut Beis, yeah? Two of them were Baruch Hashem fine. The third one, we absolutely have to restart from the from the beginning. I ugaver davkid keshoiso. That's where I got wrong. Demei, I went wrong there. Demei boso bezol. The line starts with the word demei. It's about ten or more lines, ten or so lines from the bottom of the page. I ugaver. Yeah. The third case of the cases where it wasn't so clear who is to blame. The blame game, right? We had a case of a guy who was mafkid by his mother. Yeah, and then there was miscommunication between them. So then, unfortunately, the mafki, the owner, lost because it wasn't clear who is the one who actually messed up that she put it in the cartelisa. Then we had the case of the Yisomim and the bull. And now comes the third case also where it's unclear who's Chayev. And again, it's going to fall between the cracks. There was a man, as we said, he was mafki. He deposited kishois. Kishois is, I think it's hops. It's what you put in the beer in order to make it very beery and uh, in order to make, to ferment. That's a choice. And he was mafkid, he deposited by his friend. And have a lady day, Nami Kario de Kshoiso. The man himself, the Shomer, the Shomer also had his own kri, had his own pile of Kshois. And let's say they were in two separate rooms, two separate houses even. So one kri of Kshois, one pile of Kshois belongs to the Mafkid, and one of them to the Shomer. One of them, they're both obviously in the house of the Shomer. One of them belongs to the Shomer, and one of them doesn't. So far, so good. Omer Lelisause came the who, the Shomer. Now the Shomer wants to make beer. Yeah, so he obviously needs the hops, the Kshois, to make the beer with. Omer Lelisause, he told his Saris, he told his Shamish, he told his beer maker, the servant who makes the beer, Mehai Rami. Now, take from this one, which means, says Rashi, he motioned with his hand and he showed him, take from this one, meaning from mine. Yeah, take from, from our thing. But he didn't specify and say this and not the other. He just said, you know, hello, good morning, oh, 9.28, let's start our new beer making day. So take from this one, meaning from ours and not from the other. But he didn't say that. He just motioned and showed, take from here. Ozal went the stories, which wasn't the sharpest, uh, you know, whatever pencil in the case. And what did the stories do? So, he went, he took from the other one. Yeah, meaning that the stories took the hops, the kshois, from the pile that he shouldn't have taken from, the one who doesn't belong to, to them, doesn't belong to, to his boss, to his employer, the one who belongs to the Depositor, you shouldn't have taken from there. So now, again, start this kind of game. Omar of Amram, this is the third time for this page. Says Rav Amram, How shall the Dayonim judge this case? How shall the judges judge this case? What shall we do? It's not so simple. Who is at fault here? If we tell him Zil Shlim to who? To the Shoimer, who's the main guy. He's obviously the main responsible person. And he would take go and pay. Omar, he would say, rightfully so, I know me, you're looking at me, I'm in the hot seat. I'm really Mehai Rami. I told that piece of work, I told him take from here. And so you should have understood from here and not from the other. I told him to take from the right one, not to, yeah, that's what I told him. He should have understood by himself that I don't, that, that excludes the other pile that he shouldn't have taken from. But he didn't say, he just said take from here. 
Amalei, now comes, therefore let's move the blame to who? To the Soris. The dime actually took the hops from the wrong pile. Nemele le salse zil shlim. Tell the Soris, tell the Mishalis, tell the, the, the servant, you go and pay. You're the one who mistakenly took it from the wrong place while you were instructed otherwise. Huh? Omar, lo, now he comes and he could say, and that would uh, be accepted. Lo, Omar li mehai rami, u mehai lo me. He didn't tell me take from this one and not from the other, which means, as funny as it sounds, the excuse, yeah, the Rishonim explained, and Rashi also, actually from Rashi, he thought, when he told him, take from here, it's just, you know, regular instructions, like the people tell you, close the door, turn off the light. He said, take from here. Oh, look, here, you have some hops, use them. He didn't know that it's an exclusive thing, only this and not the other. He thought, it's Mare Malka Muloi. He just shows him, you know, here, look, look, there's hops, let's get going, take from these. Yeah, he didn't exclude the other ones. Yeah, so, Lamaiti, it falls between the cracks, and at the moment, in La Halocha, nobody is at fault. At this moment, and this is one way of how the flowchart is going to move, nobody is at fault, not the Bailim, meaning the Shomer, and not the Saris, because <coughs> nobody had the right communication. I saw something very interesting in the Shulchan Aruch, quoting, uh, I think the Ran says it already. He says, depends again if it's a Shomer Soch or Shomer Chinam. If the, if the, I call him the Bailim, because Rashi also calls him the Bailim, if the Shoimer, who was the main beer maker, the boss of the of that uh, foolish servant, if he is the one who was a, if he was a shomer socho, some say he would be chayev. Very interesting, yeah. It's very interesting to see more, again and again the differences between chinam and socho, because this guy was a shomer chinam apparently. I didn't know that, but that's what Shulchan Aruch says, yeah. So shomer chinam can say, listen, I instructed him more or less. Okay, the guy is a. Uh, he didn't know the, the the servant is you know needs uh, to check his the head you know I'm okay he's okay everyone's okay that's it. However, he was a shomer socho, had the shomer been a shomer socho, then it's his fault because we should have been more careful and should have told the servant take from here and do not touch the other one. He should have been more specific and not be pashia not level of pashia yeah and should have told him don't touch that one that belongs to so and so and he didn't so because it's a shomer chinam. He doesn't have to be extra careful and realize that the, you know, that the servant is not the smartest guy. But had he been a Shomer Socher, that would be different. So that's one addition which you didn't tell you before. Comes the Gemara and adds one more factor. Let's say that the other pile of hops, meaning the other one, the one belonging not to them, the one deposited in their hands, the deposit that they're not supposed to touch, Let's say this is, you know, could be a nice, you know, beer making area. I've never been to a beer brewery. I don't know. Yeah, a big place. Maybe it's two kilometers away, three kilometers away, the other pile. And what? And 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 um, and it took him really the three kilometers to walk back and forth. And then he came with the hops. In other words, if the amount of time yeah, that it took the servant to go and come back with the hops, was really the amount of time that it takes to go to the other pile, assuming that the kosher pile is nearby. Let's say the kosher pile is half a kilometer away, the one you're supposed to use, the kosher meaning belonging to them. And the one not belonging to them is three kilometers away. It takes longer to walk. And the balabais, the shomer, should have figured out, hey, that's taking him too long, yeah? In other words, the amount of time sort of indicates that it took it from the faraway place, the, uh, and he didn't say a word. He accepted the hops and he said, thank you so much, Mr. Servant. Let's get going. How come it didn't occur to you to ask why it took you so long? Isn't it an indicator that it took from the far away one? If he did not say anything, the owner, Galia Daite, then he shows, Galia Daite, it's Gilu Das, that indicates the Nichale, the Deloy, the Nichale, yeah, that he's really happy with that, right? In other words, that shows that you are a silent partner to that Shia slash theft, yeah? In other words, how come you didn't say a word? The fact that you didn't say anything shows that you're not really you know, so much against taking from the depositor's hops, right? You, Mr. Innocent uh, uh, Shomer. Says the Gemara, but the Loi Shah and Hanami, in order to say that both of them are off the hook, must be that it wasn't Shah. In other words, both piles were half a kilometer away. There's no indication, and that's it. Now, one of the Chronim I saw, he asked the question, maybe he walked slowly. 
Maybe they didn't say a word because maybe the, 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 the servant walked slowly, so I couldn't figure it out. I think the answer is very simple. What do you mean maybe? The, the, the Shomer himself should have at least said something. The Shomer should have thought, why did it take you so long? Is it because you went to the other wrong pile or because you met a friend on the way and you were, you know, kind of, you know, laid back person? It didn't even occur to you to ask why it took him so long, right? The, that, the, that fact alone, the mere fact that he didn't ask anything, that alone shows that you're a silent partner in that, you know, Shia, and therefore in that case, the one who would be high would definitely be the Shomer. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So at the end of the day, nobody pays. Poor, oy, 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 oy. poor up depositor. Yeah. He now lost the entire career of hot. Why? Because everyone's blaming each other. So far, so bad. Now comes the part which is, you know, here comes the real uh, shuva I have to make. Here comes the part that's different. Frag the Gemara. Leave Shmira alone. Leave Shmira alone. Stop the blame game. You know what? Nobody here has to pay Mitzad being a bad Shomer. Everyone's good boys. But Soif Soif, at the end of the day, third line from the bottom. My Pseida Ika, yeah, what kind of loss is there here? Daka Mishtarshi Lei, which means, Mishtarshi Lei means as follows. <laughs> Mr. Beer Maker, Mr. Shomer, yeah, you also happen to be a beer maker yourself, right? And the hops of Mr. Depositor, how shall we call the depositor? Let's be very original, call him Reuven, uh-huh. Reuven the Depositor, so original, yeah? Reuven the Depositor and the Shim and the Shomer, Shin, Shin, Shim and the Shomer. Shim and the Shomer, you're a nice guy. Nobody's blaming you. Miscommunication, you have a dumb head of, excuse my language, of, of the Mishars. At the end of the day, you got stuff in your beer that belongs to him, right? It's not a case of Nignev of Ovdo that it's lost, gone with the wind, and stolen by uh, Listi Mizuyan or went down the drain. Those hops are in your own beer now. You made your own beer with his hops. So you are nehene. In other words, you smishtashele means you saved your own. Look at your own kri. Your own uh, uh, pile of hops is there nice and fresh. You saved money on him, on his expense. <laughs> Mamani gabach, it's called. We saw it in, uh, in uh, Bavakama Daf Kuf Kuf Aleph. In other words, at the end of the day, you're more from him. So pay him for the hops. Pay him it's not... No, it's not shlichus that's, uh, I'm saying, no, forget about Shlichus Yad. Forget about, no, Shlichus Yad is amazing. Shlichus Yad is amazing. No, no. There's no amazing here. No, Shlichus Yad is amazing. No, 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 no. Everyone is, it was a mistake, but at the end of the day, it's by who? If I mistakenly let, you know, I'm an honest guy. Do you know, guys? I'm really an honesty. Very nice. By mistake, I take, uh, I take, you have a scarf over there. I take your jacket by mistake. I have to return it. And I'm wearing your jacket now. Okay, it's a mistake. I'm just blaming you. At the end of the day, you are now Marviach gaining from the hops, his hops in your beer. Your, your water was worth, I don't know, 100 shekels. Fancy beer, I don't know, Corona, is worth uh, 1,000. You're Marviach 900, and he's expensive paying the 900. That's a very strong question. So why is everybody off the hook over here? Yeah? So the Shomer should pay, not because he's a Shomer, because he's Mishtash, he's Marviach in the expense of the other. That's a question which now we understand. Answers, Gemara, are two answers. One of them is a bit difficult. Amar of Sama Beidarova says of Sama Beidarova one answer. They have the shichra chala. The shichra, the shechar, the beer soured, became chala, vinegar, which means I didn't know what happens to beer. You know, my relationship with beer is not good at all. Yeah, and I don't know how beer tastes. For me, beer, even when it's fresh, tastes like a Gehenim, so I don't know. The kids are, you know, British people laugh at me. So now, Lamai said this beer went sour. It soured, and therefore says the owner of the beer, who's a shomer, who's marviach on the back of the other person, says, I didn't get anything. Oh, 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 I was mechaven to the question of the peanut gallery. <laughs> what a covet. My question is, what do you mean? And I saw, I didn't see any, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like you bought something from the store, which, which was good, and then you lost it. It's your fault. My Havarutha wanted to say that it was bad to begin with. In other words, right when I put it in my mitzad taking it, I'm not higher because it was a mistake, an oiness, misunderstanding. The fact that it was Marviach, we must say that right from the start, when you placed it in the water, already right at the beginning, you soured. He never gave him anything. So he didn't gain anything. No, no. I'd like to say that the hops were bad, but that's an experience. No. The beer and the hops didn't have the nice chemical reaction. In other words, it, it, was, it soured right from the start. The mitzad, me being Marviach gaining, I did not gain on your back, because right from the start, it was, eh, 
the first taste of the connoisseur was ha. Ah. Yeah, so therefore, I was I assume that's pshat. I didn't see it in Mechavrusa. Maybe he saw it himself somewhere or he said it himself. That could be a, a possible pshat. One more pshat, and then he can answer your questions. Rav Ashi Omar, oh, here's an interesting pshat. Rav Ashi Omar, the Kisi. Bechlakis Rashi and many others showing him what's Kisi. Kisi doesn't mean pockets, by the way. Kisi is Kislev. Rav Ashi says Kisi. Kisi means as follows. Rashi says the hops were bad. The hops were of bad quality. In other words, let's say the hops were worth, give me a number, a thousand shekels. Now, a thousand shekels, I don't have to pay you. Why? Miscommunication, it's not my fault, it's not my servant's fault. Yeah, sometimes you can see, even in halacha, things fall between the cracks and the depositor is not always right. So let's say a thousand shekels, he doesn't have to pay. Now, ah, oh, but you're my <laughs> My hops, thousand shekels, now fell into your beer. That didn't fall, <laughs> were placed into your beer. How much would the beer cost now? If the hops are 1,000 shekels, I would say 2,000. Yeah, it's worth more. Apparently not. The kisi, the, the, the what's the names? The, the, the hops were bad, and they were full of kotzim. They were full of all kinds of thorns and slivers of, of wood, you know, whatever, all kinds of things like that. They were bad quality hops, and therefore the gain they made in the, in the beer were very minimal. Only, let's say, 500, let's say. You have to continue to the next line. And yes, he does really pay him the, the he when we say his potter and chinami, he's only potter from paying 1,000, which is the entire amount. But he has to pay him what? He has to pay him only 500, which is what those would what, what those low level, low class, class D, whatever, shows with the difference made in his beer was let's only 500. So he has to pay 500 for enjoying for, for the for the fact that he benefited and made money. Why are you making faces? Sometimes I like it to make faces. Why? Oh, Fregder is showing him in to Toys Fest and to many other people till today. Yep, Abdechon Eman. What kind of business story is that? <laughs> in, in, what is the original owner thing? What kind of shows is it? Who, who keeps in his storage room, owner, not owner, yeah, shows that are worth, worth a thousand, right? And once placed in the beer, <laughs> they, they cause less than the own. Don't value. I would throw this to oh. There, Rishonim asked the question. Therefore, now let's read uh, Toys first. I'm, let's go back to to the previous Omud Bekisi. Okay. Let's read the simple shot of the Rach. Look at the last Toys first in in honor of all the new the new the, the newly uh, the the renewed guy that came. Yeah, the Renaissance with their old friends. Let's read Toys first. The reunion. The Rach Piresh. Yeah. It's the third line of the last Tosfos in the middle of the line. Berach Piresh. Kisi. What's Kisi? Ushem Keshois. It's a type of choice. Shitzorich Rikuch. What does it mean? It needs softening. Before you put it inside, instructions. It says what? You need to soften them a bit. And then they're good. When they're in the raw state, yeah, they're worth X amount. Once they are, you know, once they've been softened a bit, They've been developed a bit, then oh, they make nice beer. <laughs> Without the process of rikuch, that's when they're worth a little and only cause a loss. Get it? That's why the beer didn't come out good because he plays the hops too early without doing the necessary process of softening them. The Kamash Malan, what's the Chiddush says the Rach, and so don't explain everything in English. Which means, which means like this. Those hops, when you put them in a raw state, the beer goes not bad, like the first Eretz, but the gain is only 500, yeah? Okay. When do the hops, when are the hops, when are they, when are they worth a thousand? After they've been softened, he put them too early. Now, but you do have to pay him a thousand. Why? It takes nothing to just soften them. Turn them from 500 hops to 1,000 shekels hops, right? So Lemaisa, let's repeat the story. The hops that he placed, this Mishores, I don't want to employ him. Not only not be my son-in-law, not be my servant. I don't have any servants yet. He's, he wasn't the most intelligent guy in the world. He placed those hops too early, right? Nimela, the hops when placed in the beer in the water too early, yeah, they are not causing any revach to the to the beer. My beer is worth how much now instead of zero of the water, 
is worth, let's say, 500. The 500 I'll pay you. But the hops, once developed, they're worth 1,000. So Lamaisa, the Bailim did lose. We're always trying to keep sure, I'm not sure, guys, if you're with me, we're trying to show here a case in which he doesn't pay the full amount. Had he been chayv mitzad shoymer, had he been chayv as taking it as a shoymer, gneva, veda, pshia, oinsin, mitzim shoymerim, of course he has to pay the full amount, a thousand. Yeah, because those hops with a little bit of rikuch, they are worth a thousand. So potentially worth a thousand, but that's what you have to pay. Ah, you're mervich anyways. You anyhow made money on me because your beer is nicer? No. My foolish, foolish servant placed them too early, right? So Mimele, your loss was a, was a thousand because your hops very easily can become a thousand. But my gain was only 500. Because you put them too early, in my beer now became only 500 more when the not so yet good hops came in. Yeah, therefore, all I have to pay is 500, not a thousand. Baruch Hashem. That is, no, because there was miscommunication, he doesn't have to pay for the hops. Only for the Revach. I mean, the Revach is less than the hops themselves. Right. Right, right, right. Because, because, because we say falls between the cracks, as we said before, because both owner and servant misunderstood each other, it's true it's not the depositor's fault, but Lemaisi loses. You could have asked that question before. And the answer is Enochinami. He doesn't have, he, they don't have to pay for the actual physical hops for taking the hops stupidly, clumsily. They were clumsy and foolish, true. But Lemaisi, because nobody can be blamed clearly on Pishia here, being a Shomer Chinam, Mimela, that's it. He didn't give instructions. He didn't get the instructions. Mimela, like the story with the grandmother, with the, with the Kartalisa, same thing. And Mimela, Mitzad paying for the hops themselves, and Malasot. And you're talking about gaining? No. Because he placed it too early, my beer did not gain more than a thousand. Gained less than a thousand. And Achrami, they had pay you. I have cheap beer now. I can sell it to, I don't know, some cheap people there for the, whichever work. Yeah, I have to be more politically correct. The more people join. <laughs> okay, yes, Ellen, I want to hear your voice. Thank you. Yeah, MG. A mafkid. Oh, now we're going to talk about what happens if you mafkid money, deposited money by the banker. What a smart thing to do, right? So, yeah, no cryptocurrency back then. So, you mafkid money by the Shulchani. Now, I want to make a small uh, preface here. It's a small, uh, a small introduction. All of you remember that not that long ago, we all had to write Prusbul, right? Even if we don't have any loans that we know about. Why? So the Rav explained to me that, I mean, it's not in Shulchanoch. They didn't really have banking system back then. But we're going to see something very similar. If you have money in the bank, if you're lucky enough to be not in the red, you know, but in the black, so then you have money in the bank. It's not exactly a deposit. It's a loan. Because obviously... <laughs> Those, let's say, 500 shekels you put in the machine, you know, like, yeah, that's not the same ones you're getting back. Obviously, they use the money. That's all interest. Excuse the pun. <laughs> and then they give you back other 500 shekels. So the deposit you have in the bank is not really, really a deposit. You don't go to the bank with a closed envelope and expect to get back the exact same, uh, you know, store the same bills, obviously. So Picotin by a bank is actually not a deposit. It's sort of like a loan. Just let's, you know, in modern mind, yeah, today it's all wired. Anyway, it's soon... In t less than 10 years' time, you know, somebody in the family is studying the subject. In less than 10 years' time, they will not be cash to the world. So is the plan. So is the plan of the few governments. They won't be cash bechlal. That's the plan. I don't know. I'm not such a maven, but that's what people say. But it's not really our topic right now today. Says the Heilige Mishnah. Somebody deposited money by the Shulchani. Shulchani, we know Mr. Shulchani. He's called in English a vexler. That's the word in English. Okay, money changer. Money changer, you know? Money changer, bureau de change. Yeah, so the person was Mafkid Moes by the Shulchani, who's basically the old-fashioned what? Banker, banker, money changer. The guy needs money all the time, and he deposited money by him. Depends now. What's the status of this money? Im tsurin, if they're bundled, they're tied. Yeah, imagine yourself like olden day pouch, you know, tied. Lo ishtamish bahen. That means the fact that they're tied, that's okay. No entry sign. Stop, no entry to who? To the banker, to the shulchani. 
and therefore the shulchan is not allowed to use them. Letikach, therefore he's not allowed to use them. Im avdu ein chay ba'achrayusan. If they're lost, he's not responsible. Why is that? What does it mean that it's lost and therefore is not chayev? That means it's shomer. What? He's not allowed to enjoy them. He's supposed to keep them in the corner, not make any benefit. He's not supposed to use them in his money changing business. They're supposed to be on the side. No reward was mentioned. And I think that's called in old French, Shomer Hinam. Shomer Hinam. And Shomer Hinam, or maybe Hinam, Aveda is not Chayev. Whatever Aveda is, yeah, as long as it's not blatantly Pesheah, Mamish, uh, you know, negligent, that middle level, right? Shomer Hinam is Potter, Mutoin. However, if a shulchani, if a banker, money changer gets the pouch open without any words mentioned, oh, please, please, please don't ask that question. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. No words were mentioned. In other words, the only, yeah, these are like two quiet people, mafia style, yeah. So now the only indicator of whether the banker should or shouldn't use them is the status of the bag. Is it closed, which means don't use it? Or mutavin ishtamish ben. If the patch was open, that means, Mr. Banker, you are allowed to use it if you really have to. And that is your reward for looking after my money. That is called Shomer Sahar. Shomer Sacho. Why? Because you have the option, the ability to use them, right? If you want, you look after the money. I expect the money back tomorrow at uh, 255. But meanwhile, the fact it's open without opening my mouth, ha ha ha. The fact that the pouch is open, that alone shows you're allowed to use it. Therefore, you're shomer socho. Lefikach, therefore, im ovdu. Chai b'achrayusan. If they're lost, you're chai b'achrayusan. By the way, I'm taking sides here. There are two explanations in the Gemara. I'm going with one side. It's chai b'achrayusan. What's the other side, by the way? Anybody here? You all have PhD in Arbal Shem, you already know. In other words, what could be another explanation or another definition to me giving Mr. Banker the open pouch, which means you can use the money as much as you want. No, no, no. How do you define him? I define him as a Shomer Socher. Could you define him also as a dot, dot, dot? Shoel. Yes, this new car. It's Shoel. He borrowed. Borrowing is not only your black and decker, borrowing money. In English, it's actually the same word. It's even better for you guys. In Hebrew, that's called Loive. That's called Shoel. It's the same word. He's a borrower. He borrowed money. So that's why it's Chayev, because he borrowed. Okay, that's also an option. But all, everyone agrees that if he can use them, his level of, 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 of Shmira is higher. Is definitely not that, right? So if something happened like a Veda, you got to pay. Okay. Now, Etzel Balabais. However, if I deposited the money by a regular Balabais, who happens to be a Kolal guy, computer programmer, gardener, or a lawyer, whatever, Balabais, who doesn't need money all the time, he doesn't have a turnover of money, doesn't have the necessity of money, whether they're closed or open, you're not allowed to use them, which means, now we understand everything. The banker, once he gets an open pouch, because he's a banker and everybody knows he needs money all the time, Ellen, your idea is actually a little bit uh, in tune now. Why do you put money dafka by the banker and not by all 50 other people in the market? Because Ms. Tama, you want to be nice to the banker or you gain something, higher level of shmira with an open pouch to the banker who needs money all the time, the shulchani, that's like a green light sign. Go ahead and use it. But if you are a computer programmer, you know, you get your, you know, 15,000 shekels every 20th of the month, you don't have cash turnover in your house more than anybody else, then what? I gave you an open pouch, so what? It was a picodon. I didn't say it's halvo. I said it's a picodon. Therefore, you're not allowed to use them, even if it's open. It's a regular deposit. Deposit? Don't touch a deposit. What are you, a Therefore, whether it's closed or open, don't use them. As if you're a regular person, is not a banker or money changer or this. Lefikach, therefore, rakre gateva kasha. Lefikach, therefore, im ovdu enchai b'achra yusan. If they got lost in the middle level, gneva v'aveida, since you are a regular balabas who is not a big uh, money wheeler dealer and you got this open close, who cares? Then Lamai said, your shomer, chinam. No reward was mentioned. And therefore, if it got lost, you're not chai b'achar yusen because of shomer chinam. One minute. Now, what happens to chen v'ni? What's a chen v'ni? Shopkeeper. What happens if you put it by a chen v'ni? A chen v'ni, before we continue, 
has money turnover as the Tiferes it's all exp- one of them for Mishnah explains very nicely Echenvani, again that's before credit card no actually you know what's funny the word Ashrai is mentioned regarding Chenvani Echenvani yeah is a person who has cash turnover but less than the the the, the, the Shulchani the Shulchani the banker the only thing he deals with is what is money you know how my 20 years old daughter called the bank when she was four the money shop here you buy vegetables, here you buy this. Here's the money shop. All, all you see there is money, nothing else. The money shop. So the shulchani, you know, that's the money shop that's cash all the time. Therefore, if you gave him an open envelope to, uh, you know, to uh, to the banker, obviously, you mean, go ahead and use it. Now, the chenveni is somebody who also has cash turnover, but less than the shulchani, less than the banker, because sometimes it gives people a shrai. A shrai means what? Credit. Yeah, you know, look in the old Macaulay in Israel. I don't know if you guys have been long enough. You can register. How do you call it? You can, uh, no, a little shot. You, you can make an audio. There's a word for it in English. A better one. You know, the whole month, you know, you keep, you buy it on credit. There's there's another one in English, whatever. A little show. Now, they would register, you know, a whole month. And if you have done a month, you go and you pay. You buy it on a monthly credit. There is another word in English. Let me show it. It was something. It doesn't matter now. Lefikach. Now, what about the chenvani? What is the status of the chenvani? Well, Machalokas. Chenveni kebal habayis dibra Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir says the chenveni is not much like a banker. It's not like he uses money all the time. Therefore, it's like a bal habayis. It's considered to be like a regular bal habayis, which means what? That that is a shomer chinam. Nobody is expecting to use it. Keep it in the corner and keep quiet and don't touch it. Therefore, shomer chinam. Your level of responsibility is minimal. Rabbi Yudai Meir chenveni keshulchoni. But it says no, it says the Chenveni is like a Shulchani. Chenveni, although he's not such a money wheeler dealer, he does need cash quite a lot to give change, you know, in the supermarket sometimes, you know, to look for change and he change. So maybe for that he needs to buy Nuschoira, maybe from the provide from the from the wholesaler. And therefore the Chenveni, according to Rabiuda, is like a Shulchani. And if the envelope is open, the pouch is open, that indicates green light, go ahead and use it as long as you give it back. And that is the halohe like Rabiuda. Question time. Yes, I'm listening to every word you say. One clear thing is out of this mission. Let's siphon the main point of the mission, the salient point, and that is. Needless to say, everybody knows if he's above the age of 10, the difference between deposit and loan is what? Deposit is don't use, just keep it from me. And loan means do use, as long as you give it back to me on time. Ashra, I mean, yeah. Now, comes an exception to the rule, and that's one exception to the rule that we have to remember from the Mishnah. If I deposited a pouch open, wide open, to the hands of a shulchani, a guy who needs money all the time and uses money all the time, and it shows him out of everybody, you know, like to give bring a calls to Newcastle. In other words, I brought the money to the chenvani, and it's open, that without saying anything, Although I did not say it's a loan, the mere fact I gave him an open pouch to his hungry eyes, he needs cash all the time, so soon there's going to be a guy with a $10,000 to change cash. Therefore, the halacha says, and everyone agrees to that, everyone agrees that that is considered as either Shomer Socha or Shoel. He's allowed to use the money, in simple words, and therefore his level of Shmira is higher. He's like at least a Shomer Socha, not a Shoel. And therefore, if anything happens to it, in the level of let's say never vaveda, he'd be high to pay. That's it. Because that's even the unspoken agreement, that's understood. These are the codes that we have. I even know nowadays, because I pass cash sometimes to people. Today they say that if you if you if you pass money in open envelope, it's different than a closed envelope, right? I know in the diamond center, somebody told me there is such a rule. If the envelope is closed, I mean you don't count it and open you do, there, there is it means something. No, seriously, I'm not joking. A friend, a relative of mine works in the diamond exchange in Ramat Gan, yeah, that big fancy place there. So he told me, if you give cash in a closed envelope, in an open envelope, unsealed, even if everyone trusts each other, it means something else. Here means it's counted or ch- something, it means something else. There's like a code, but the mere fact it's open. So that's what Mishnah says. The unspoken code is, if the envelope is open and the guy's a shulchani, that means go ahead and use it. That's all. What about a balabais? No, regular. Balabais is a regular guy. What about a chenveni machloikas? That's it. Beautiful. Now it's time to start the Gemara, but of course I'm going to listen to Ellen first. Yes, Arabic. Well, I did already. No, the Gemara won't actually, because I did. Sorry. I'm just saying, because obviously they're two ends of the spectrum. They're not two ends of the spectrum, no. 
to end of the spectrum is a, is a shulchani versus a regular guy, versus a taxi driver, computer programmer, gardener, whatever. The main, the one in the middle is a chendoni. The shopkeeper is a person who needs cash all the time, but not as much as the banker. That's why it's a point of uh, machlot. No? Okay. Fine, fine, fine. How's your Shabbos? Okay? Right. I hope your Shabbos was good. Right, so let's continue. Okay. Says the Elegi Gemara. Frag the Gemara now. Mishum de Tzrurin lo ishtamesh ben. The Gemara now goes completely to the other extreme. Says the Gemara, just because that they're tied, they're tied regularly, the banker is not allowed to use them? What kind of question is that? Explains Rashi, and I'm saying this in my own words, yeah? If we already decided so nicely that everybody knows that a banker needs what? Needs money, right? Unless I do something special to make a no entry sign, we assume that what? That the Mr. Banker would use it. So now you're telling me that if I tie, if I just bundle and I, I tied the knot on the on the bundle, I, I shoo him, I tied it, that alone is no entry sign. It's not a no entry sign, says Rashi. Everybody, they're called them of Everybody ties their bundle. Everybody ties. Everyone closes their wallet. In other words, closing the wallet is not a special thing to show. Don't use it. Mainly if it's regular balabais, I understand. Of course, don't use it. But if we assume a banker is somebody who would use it, that the no entry sign has to be something stronger. And that's exactly what the Gemara says. In order to show the banker don't use it, you have to do two things. The tzrurin to tie it, which is regular, normal, yeah? To open is the abnormal thing, to dafka show entry. Also to have a regular knot still shows he's allowed to use it. Tzrurin vechasumin, if they're tied and there's an extra stamp on it, you know, people used to walk around with a, you know, signet ring and stamp it and show, this is with my stamp, which is above normal shmira. That's like today they use this wax, you know, like red wax. That shows, that's a don't touch me kind of message. That's one answer. Amari Omar Bekesho Mishune. Amari goes with a lower level of Siman. Kesho Mishune, what Kesho Mishune? A strange, different, out of the box kind of Kesho. It's not a regular run of the mill knot, regular, you know, we call it grandmother's knot. It's something in the shape of a swan. Remember from Elumetsias, something to show that this Kesho should stay that way. Ikadamri, some say, boy of Mari, some say that Rav Mari didn't make a statement, but he asked the question, Kesha Meshune Mai, what would be the Allah about Kesha Meshune? Is it enough? A Kesha which is not an extra stamp. An extra stamp for sure is good. For sure shows stamp with my own insignia, with my own signet ring. That of course shows I don't let you touch it. What about a strange looking Kesha? It's not as much as a, as a Mamish as the ring. What would be the Allah then? Teiku, says the Gemara Teiku. However, it's not a teku. It doesn't stay in a teku. You know why? Because there are two versions in Ramari's words. According to one version, Ramari said that the strange kesher is good enough. And that's what the Shulchan Aruch says. I saw it inside yesterday. To make a strange kesher, to show it's not a regular run of the mill, regular pouch, regular wallet. It's a wallet with like an, you know, you put an extra kind of funny ribbon on your wallet, let's say. Yeah, like it's something like that. That shows that's already a non, don't touch me sign without the signet ring, and we are now... I'm working on the new books. I said, I, I mentioned it at the beginning of the mission, right? And I said, nicely. I said, no verbal message was said. Because obviously, if the verbal, verbal message was said, then you go with the verbal, obviously. If it's tied with 50 knots, but he told him, use it as much as you want, he uses it. If it's wide open and he verbally told him, da, 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 so of course you go with the verbal. The whole story here, here is there was no verbal communication. He quickly went to the bank. He wasn't rushing to Mincha. And therefore, we have to use uh, uh, visual signs and not verbal ones. Okay, very nice. Now comes the main part. Now comes fun. Here comes fun. Here comes lomdes, lomdes, lomdes. Let me ask you a question before we start. Yep. Before we start, and today we have to get to the Mishnah at least. Hopefully on Wednesday or Thursday we're starting a new pair. Kazahov, we're going for the gold. Merit Hashem. 
So let's continue now. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you lent your neighbor your Black & Decker uh, drill, whatever, the whole big set in the green thing. Don't lend it to me because I want to know what to do with it. Yeah, and then, <laughs> now he did Mashiach. You two are very yeshivish people. You know the halacha. You've been to Amud Yomi many years. He does Mashiach, the neighbor. You're, you're a nice guy. You lend it to him. Yeah, would you lend it to a neighbor? Yeah, sure. I know you. So then, and the neighbor did Mashiach. Before he got to use it, yeah, he didn't yet get to use it. You know, Sukkot is in two days' time, so he didn't start building a Sukkot yet, yeah? And now, all of a sudden came struck by lightning, boom, and and the thing is gone, whatever, fire broke, complete onus. Shoel is chayb owns him. Now, he already pulled it to his own domain. He pulled it. He didn't yet use it. Is he already a Shoel or not? Is he already chayb at that moment after pulling, but before actually actualizing his Sheela rights He's already chayv if it's struck by lightning. Everyone says yes. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Okay, let's see what the Moroim has to say. <laughs> he doesn't own, he owns a shayla. I mean, he became a shayla. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Lavuna. Says Lavuna. Dafilu nensu. Forget about what I told you now. There was introduction in general. Says Ravuna as follows. Once the banker, once the shulchani got into his shop, yeah, and pulled the open or or regularly tied, not in a strange na 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 na, the regular pouch without the extra signs, without the extra bits, regular. That when it's by the shomer, you give it to the bank. You mean the bank's going to use it? And let's say something happened to it, the onus, meaning it wasn't lost in the middle stage. Onus struck by lightning, a robber, armed robber came, as it happens in banks sometimes. Yeah, then he's high on that. Why? Because as I told you in the Mishnah, the, you guys were saying it. You guys, Yaakov, you said it. Once the person is, is allowed to use it, he's a shayel. The shayel is chav not only by Veda, it's chav by Oinsin, right? Break the Gemara. That makes a lot of sense, but <coughs> the Mishnah doesn't say that. Break the Gemara. But Ovdu Ktani, it says Ovdu. It says in the Mishnah, look up in the Mishnah. You can look up. You look. Uh, ra please uh, raise your eyes to, to Ovdu. Lift your eyes. It says in the third line in the Ovdu, Lefikach im Ovdu in the Chav Usually when we say of the we the middle level, not the worst negligence and not the worst uh, oinus, yeah? So it says of the, not like you, not like you said, Ravuna, answers the Gemara, don't worry, Kedarabba, we saw Rabba many times here and also in Bovekama, Doma Rabba, Nignevu, you know what kind of Gneva we talk about sometimes? The least is Uyan. In other words, many, the words Gneva Vaveda, this is something my entire school years I never have, Gneva Vaveda, I wish I had this chart with me. I think you should have it all the time with you, all the time. Gneva Vaveda is a sliding scale. Usually Gneva Vaveda means what? The middle stage, not the worst negligence. Not the guy on his smartphone that just lets everything run around. And not the, the worst uh, oinus, yeah, which means struck by lightning and UFO came from Shemaim. But Lamais, Gneva Vaveda can mean all three, right? It got stolen and got lost. How? Any of the options. Yeah, the guy was on his, uh, you know, very hosh of the that he's looking at the Facebook, eh? and the thing gets stolen or gets lost. How's that called? How's it called? Shia. And what happens? And that's what Robert says now. What happens if the guy's a super duper good shomer, head of FBI, yeah, whatever, very good shmira, and it got lost or stolen in a way that is beyond his control? Nignevuva of this called what? Honest. So really, Gnevuva of can fit into any of the three. Right, and that's what the Gemara says. Don't attack me when I said he's chayv the oinsin because it's a shayel gneva vaveda. Yes, gneva vaveda in the form of oinus. It's real. We're all friends. It's gneva vaveda, which is oinus. Look what Rabba says. It's much better than me. Rabba, sorry, doma Rabba. Nignevu belistim izuyan. There was an armed robbery. It's it's stolen, but stolen not beyond. The, I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, I don't have a gun. Guy came with blazing gun to me, covered face. That's what's called gneva nadzela. It's beyond my control. What I mean, Shibish guy, you think I have a gun on my <laughs> what can I do? Yeah. No, that's what's called Geneva because covered face. I don't have to go into it. There are three levels. Let's I'm saving time here. No, 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 no. This is exactly of do. How can you have a case of getting lost and it's beyond my control? Shetovas Finosa Bayam, his boat, you know, he went on a cruise and he had the money with him, looking after the money like you know, the apple of his eye, and the boat sank. Ground sank, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the guy survived. The money is in the ocean. That's beyond his control. Titanic. Whoop. What can you do? So therefore, it's a veda. What 
But Lamaisa, Rabba sticks to the fact, again, well, all we have to remember now is Rabba, excuse me, Ravuna and Rabba, they're together. Ravuna mainly says, our Mishnah, the banker who got the cash in what? In an, not open, in not a super closed envelope, in a regular envelope, he's called a shayel. He's a shayel. He's borrowing. He's borrowing money. What do you mean? You can use it when you want. Use it when you want. In my book, it's called borrowing money, right? If you borrow money, you're not a shomer, socher, you're a shayel. And as such, as a shayel, you have an oinsin. If there was a bank robbery, yeah, if there was a bank robbery, now the bank is going to give you the money. I don't know what they do, really. Yeah, they have to give you the money because Lamai said that he's a shoyel. There was an armed robbery. That's what I call Gneva Vaveda in my books in this case. It's have to pay me. Shoyel, it's have oinsin, as we learned with Kita Dalit. So far, so good. That is Rav Huna. Now, Rav Nachman Omar. Rav Nachman Omar. I hope in North Korea there are no thefts. I hope Rav Nachman Omar. Nensu Loi. No. Says Rav Nachman, no. If they were Nenas, if the money came and then come, if a robber came with a blazing gun, those complete oinus or a ship, a ship sunk, or whatever, then we say, Nensu, no, you're not Chayv Nensu. His libel is only Shomer Sokho. Interesting. Why? Why is that? Listen to this. As opposed to what everybody here said, Rav Nachman is against everybody here in this room. Says Rav Nachman, in the interim period between the permission to use it, which is Meshicha, until the actual use, is called a Shomer Soho, not a Shoyel. Let's give a timeline. Nine o'clock, I go to the bank, I come into the bank, and I said, uh, without saying too much, Ellen, yeah? And I put it in a regular envelope, not super closed, super sealed, okay? I'm sorry. Mr. Banker knows he's allowed to use it. That's the non-verbal message, okay? He didn't have to use it. 9.30 comes a guy to the money changer with a million dollar, I don't know. He wants to change it now. Between 9 and 9.30, are you following me? Nine o'clock, he's allowed to use it. Didn't yet use it. 9.30, he started to use it and actually take cash from my envelope, which is okay. Between 9 and 9.30, he's not a showel. He's called a shomer sofer. And therefore, if at that point came a guy with gun blazing, he's potter. Because a shomer sofer is potter from oinus. Only a shoyel is. He will get to the higher level of the once he uses it. Before he uses it, he's only called a shomer sofer. If you don't like Rav Nachman's opinion, follow me. Because Rava and other people don't like it either, and then Rav Nachman is going to explain himself. Amale Rava comes Rava and tells Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, what are you talking about? Ledidoch, according to you, what do you mean is a shemer socher? Make up your mind. The Omar Tnen Suloi, you say is not chayven oinsim, right? Alma lo havishar lalayu. As opposed to what everybody here in the room said, you Rav Nachman think for some reason that as long as you're allowed to be a shoyel but you did not yet actualize your she'el rights, you're not called a shoyel. Okay, let's take that as an option. If so, is shoyel lo yhavi. In other words, if you say that shoyel means somebody who practically uses the, the Black and Decker or the money, but before that it's only a potential and not yet there and only the permission and only the thing, and you don't look at that yet, you don't care about potential, you say you really have to use it in order to be had. If so, fine, but then Shomer Sochor Nami Lohavi. Why do you call him Shomer Sochor? Which Sochor is involved? Call him Shomer Chinam. Get me? Now there's a question of Nachman is as follows. Rabbi, Rav Hun and Rabbi say, look everybody here. They say, once you did Meshicha, the magic pool already, are you allowed to use it? The fact you're allowed to use it, you're a child. Yeah? You have your gym membership, full membership. Ah, you don't go to the gym only once a month? Tater. The, the members, that's what you guys are saying. You bet some, you're there. Says of Nachman, no. And Nachman says, no, 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 no. Just because they pulled it, I'm not yet a shoyel. Have you ever seen machines, even in 2022, that you have to push two buttons or one button and one lever? I've seen computer here and here. He says you need to press two buttons in order to be a shoyel. The permission from the owner with, with Mashiach. Huh? And then only when he really becomes a shoyel, starts drilling with a Black & Decker, start taking money from the patch, only then is a shoyel. Fine, says the Gemara. So why is the Shomer Socher in between? Why do you say between 9 and 9.30, before, between the Mashiach and the usage, why is he Shomer Socher? Call him a Shomer Chinam. Well, he's not yet a shoyel. Answers the Gemara, no. And now we're getting to the punchline. Now we're getting to understand of Nachman, and that's the halacha. Omele, Rav Nachman replies to all his opponents, mainly Ravuna, Beham din halacha. In that aspect, I agree with you, the what? The hoil venene mehane, and hene is like an article that surely enjoys. 
because it surely benefits Ba'ahu Hano the Imitrami Lezbina, listen to this, between 9 and 9.30, he doesn't need the money, okay? It's a quiet day in the bank, quiet half an hour. But he has, I remember you once enjoying this bar. We said that bar once in Tosfos. Yeah, I remember you reacting to it. The Hano that the person has between 9 and 9.30, that he is able to use the money if somebody comes with 1,000 euros, right? Although nobody came. He's only sipping his coffee saying he's stealing him. But in his mind, he knows, oh, I have uh, thousands of shekels that if anybody comes, I'm able to give him good rate and cash more than the other guy. Yeah, the Isbe Ravcha, that he has that potential gain, Soban Behu, yeah, he's able to sell for that gain. Havi Allah Shomer Sochor, that makes him a Shomer Sochor, which means, true, says Rav Nachman, I stick to my guns. When a person has an item, let's talk about money now, yeah, the really, I only call a shoyel once he started practically real in the Oilem Hamaisa. I really want him to be using the money, and only then he's called a shoyel. To start using, let's say, 100 out of 1,000, then a robber came, then he's a then he's an, uh, shoyel. However, the interim time between 9 o'clock when he got the money and 9.30 that he started using it, he knows in his mind, oh, I'm ragua, I'm calm, I'm happy, I have that money in the corner to give. That is something people would pay money for. To be in that state of mind is something you'd pay some kind of money. I don't know how much money, but some money you'd pay for it. Let a person is trapped for cash. Oh, Baruch Hashem, he's getting a salary. How do people pay salaries nowadays? We all know. By wire, right? By transfer, or by whatever. The Not the salary, the whatever. The money. Yeah. Let's say you're really strapped. So now the guy is sending you what? A screenshot of, of the money that already left his bank and is about to come to your bank. You would pay money to see that screenshot in front of your eyes. Because sometimes the bank wants to see it or the mortgage or somebody. Mimela, knowing that he has the money, that makes him into a status of Shomer Sochor. That's the Swar of Nachman. The, 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 the period, interim period between getting it and actually using it, knowing that I have it is a Shomer Sochor, according to Rav Nachman. While Rav Huna says no. Rav Huna says no. He's a Shal right from the start. Having the Rashus to use it is called Sheila. It's up to you when, you when you press the button, but that's not starting the Shayla. It's just actualizing an existing thing. Ace, we have to continue to the Mishnah. Believe me, I promise you when we get to the Mishnah, I'll be answering, try to answer any question in the world. Ace, Rav Nachman, now it's our time for Rav Nachman to attack. Rav Nachman is questioning Ravuna. What's an Ace, from a Mishnah? Ace, Rav Nachman, Ravuna. I think it's a Mishnah, if not a Bryce. I think it's a Mishnah. Oh, one more one minute. Here we're talking about really, really hot, dangerous money. And that is money of Hekdesh. Let's say the person who deposits money in the bank is a gizbar. What's a gizbar in English? A treasurer. A treasurer of the Holy Temple. The gizbar based on Mikdash has money. Mistakenly, mistakenly, that gizbar took money that belongs to Hekdesh, to based on Mikdash. He thought it was his own. Yeah. And then he took it to the bank. What happens if a gizbar takes money that belongs to Beis Amikdash, mistakenly thinks that it's his, but it's not. It belongs to Beis Amikdash. And he takes and he buys ice cream for the kids. What does he have to do? He has to bring a sacrifice. He has to bring a korban, a korban osham, osham ilus, only by mistake. If it's Bemezi, then he eats either Chayv Misa or Malkus. But the Shogun is Chayv a korban. That's the regular, that's the basic halacha. A mafkid mois of Hekdesh. <laughs> It's El Shulchani. You took mistakenly money that's not yours of Hekdesh and you took it to the banker to the money changer. Im Tzrurin. Now he used it eventually, the banker, surprisingly. Im, if they're tied, properly tied, double knot or the special knot, lo yishtamish ben. The banker is not allowed to use it. Lefikach. Im hoitzi. Let's say the banker did use it. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. The banker used it knowing full well he's not supposed to. But he did not belong to Hekdesh. Uh, nobody knows that in the story. But the banker thinks he's cheating on the owner, not knowing that it's Hekdesh. The Gizbar is not at fault. The Gizbar doesn't have to bring a Korban. Why? Because the Gizbar did not give it to the banker to use. He gave it to him triple knotted, knotted very well. So the Gizbar not only doesn't know it's Hekdesh, he didn't, give, he didn't let anyone use it. He just deposited it. It's the banker who, excuse me, made the, the stink. So the banker would have to bring a korban. He's the one who, who actually used it against the rishos of everybody. 
Now, the Imu Torin, it's a good Chazor on the Mishnah also. Let's say that money, the real belongs to that base of Mikdash was in an open envelope or loosely, regularly closed envelope or a pouch. Ishtamish Ben. The non-verbal message is, Mr. Banker, go ahead and use it as much as you want. Be my friend. Yeah. Lefikach, therefore. Imhoitzi. Now, let's say the banker, banker used it, that's done, with the permission of the owner. Then Mo'ala Gizbal, the owner, the treasurer, the Gizbal, is really at fault here. He allowed who? He allowed the banker to use money. They really came to Bebesa Mikdash. Gizbal should go tomorrow to Bebesa Mikdash with a big fat ram. Ail, Ail, Oshom, with the gods of Maise, with Choymesh, Mechule, Mechule. Now, Frecht, now Rav Nachman, on Rav Huna. Now Rav Nachman's turn to attack. The E amount of Ilunensu, if you want to tell me that right from the start, Mr. Banker is considered to be a Shoyel, and therefore, if somebody comes with a gun to the bank, boom, and takes out the money, Oine starts right from the beginning because it's called a Shoyel right from the start, like everybody here in the room was saying, my area hoitzi. Why did the Bryce say the once the banker you the banker once the banker the, the shulchani once he used it he took out money then you know all hell broke loose why I feel Lloyd Sinami Bishlam according to me that's very good I say it's only a shoal when he starts using it but according to you he's a shoal once it's in his hands because the potential to use it according to you is already called full shoal which is what everybody here in the room said but the Mishnah doesn't say that the Mishnah said once the banker opens it and gives it to Pachachovsky, the client, the customer, then it starts, then the problem starts. Why? Omar Lay says Ravuna to him, says Ravuna to Rav Nachman, don't worry. I stick to my guns. The Mishnah or the Brisa, the really mean, even if it's not Haiti, even if really he did not use it, the potential use already makes him a shoyal, which means that the Gizbar is already moil. The Gizbar gave it to someone to use. It was mashil it to someone. The Gizbar has to pay always, right from the start. I did it. You're picking on the word hoitzi. Why did the Bryce say that he really used it? The Bryce doesn't mean to say only if he used it. Even if he didn't use it, the mere fact he's allowed to use it is bad enough. Like I said, he's already a shoyal. And if the Gizbar gave money and non-verbally said to the banker, go ahead, use, 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 whatever you want, as long as you give me... Really, the Gizbar is at fault. The Gizbar has to bring a korban. Why did the Mishnah say the word hoitzi? Because Mishnahis and Brises like to stay with kind of homogenic, consistent style. Stylistically, if the Reisha uses the word, the Sefer also uses the word. Since the Reisha said the word hoitzi, in the Reisha we speak about a case when the banker doesn't have to pay. And sorry, the banker has to, the banker is the one chayv, excuse me, not the owner. And then we said hoitzi. Then we said hoitzi, of course, because we had to speak about Rashi said it's a bigger chiddush you took out. Afilu hoitzi, the owner, it's not his fault, it's the banker's fault, and it's never the, the gizbar's fault, even if the banker was moitzi. That's a resha. Therefore, the safer kept the main consistency and the same lotion and said hoitzi, but it's loved after. It's really loved after the lotion, and really the mere fact the banker, the shulchan, he has a right to use it with an open envelope right from the start. It's a shoyel. He's allowed to open it. It's called a shoyel. The Gizbar is called a mashil. It's Kilo the Gizbar threw it out of the realm of Hekdash, and the Gizbar would have to pay by paying a korban to Hashem from an Oshem by being the Moyel. Baruch, you've been very patient. The year is officially over, but I'm very ready to hear your question. Questions and comments. Thank you very much. Have a great day and a happy, happy, as I say, Hanukkah. I can't get it right. I don't know. Yeah. Look.